Is that correct? Good morning. All right. So um, yeah, just just now. If okay, at the back, uh, people at the back, can you hear me? Okay. Cool. All right. I I prefer not to use it because I need to bring it everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. That's okay. Right. All right. So um, yeah, just now, just now the the lead. Uh, the 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 person just now mentioned about my years of experience. I feel I'm the older I'm the oldest one around here. So um, feel a bit ashamed though. <laughs> okay. So right before we begin, any anyone have not heard about my SQL before? Raise your hands. If there is, you will have a private session with me later on. We have, you have a lot of catching up to do. Right? So, MySQL has been around for a long, long time. We, are, uh, we were founded in 1995 as a company called MySQL AD at the time. Before we actually uh, bought over by Sun Microsystem on 2009. And year after, which is 2010, we were bought over by Oracle Corporation. So right now we are under Oracle umbrella. <coughs> okay, so um, today, today's topic we are going to talk about a tool which is very, has a big relation with the, the topic of, uh, on this conference, which is Python. About uh, this tools is made from Python scripts and libraries, and it is available for download for free from our website mysql.com. You can check it out yourself if you want. It's available there called MySQL Utilities. So, this the aim of this utility is to make dev development and operation for MySQL easier. Why? Because this script actually put a lot of a lot of single operations together to become one uh, big continuous operations. Okay, right. So now, um, yeah. So MySQL has MySQL is the most popular open source database in the world at this point. Why? Well, because we are we were downloaded eighty thousand times a day all over the world. Eighty thousand, eight zero. People use people downloaded MySQL for many reasons. They want to test. They uh, they want to develop on it. They want to install on their laptop. They want to install on the server or everywhere. They can install. If they can even install MySQL on handphone. Any one of you guys have a Xiaomi handphone here? Come on, don't be shy. Xiaomi is a great handphone. Anyone? Xiaomi, every Xiaomi handphone has my SQL in it. In fact, um, we, are, we, were, we are the most popular open source database. Why? Because many of you Actually, a lot of people here in the world already use, already a MySQL user without realizing that they are already using MySQL. Why? Because a lot of, a lot of devices, a lot of softwares that you use right now behind running MySQL. For instance, WordPress. Every WordPress have MySQL. You guys, any, uh, any one of you blogging here? Definitely log, right? Yes, I, I myself blog. So, um, and then uh, later on we will see more example of that. Now we are also a uh, leading database in the cloud, in the cloud area. As you can see, you are from AWS, Google Cloud, a lot of, uh, a lot of other cloud as well, Eucalyptus and everyone, all Rackspace even, all provide MySQL as a service or they provide MySQL to be installed on their platform as well. They are also using MySQL internally. Then the, uh, 
web applications from the first time from the first time we were founded our founder already have a vision to build database for web application at the time the, the direction is web applications that's why we were very popular on the blogging side at the time because it's all about uh, what, what do we call it uh, web 1.0 is it yeah at that time it's about blogging so a lot of people uh, use MySQL and continuing continuing until now for instance Facebook Facebook have around three years uh, three years ago it has around 20,000 MySQL servers three years ago now you lost count I don't know we, we get to check with Markel again okay right uh, the next one is Yahoo Japan Yahoo Japan has 16,000 MySQL servers three years ago 1616 Yahoo Japan only so you see that uh, every uh, a lot of uh, websites all over the world is powered by MySQL so the next one is Hadoop is the big data we're talking about big data the trend in the at this point all over the world is about big data how to how to how to actually use this data structured and unstructured to become a useful information to help you to make decisions and we are we are 80 we are powering 80 percent of big data all over the world now you want you might want to to take note of this we are number one Linux career IT skill 2013 MySQL is number one Linux IT skill so if you guys want to uh, want to you know I believe a lot of you guys here are students if you guys want to have a career in IT and especially in Linux area you might want to pick up MySQL it's for your own benefit um, we are yeah download sales growth we were downloaded 80, 80 000 times awards we have some a lot of awards from different online magazines and online institutions um, and LAMP LMP is the is open source development stack we are we are the M L is Linux A is Apache M is the MySQL it's not Microsoft huh? my SQL okay. is MP is the programming language like PHP Perl Python right uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, a brief picture of what use who's using my SQL Google Facebook as you can see eBay in fact we are used by nine of the top ten most traffic websites in the world Anyone can guess who is not using MySQL from the top 10 website in the world, most traffic website. Yo. What is it? Wait, you, you, just, you just say something, yes, no? Yes, correct. Exactly. That is, the, that is the only website that is not using MySQL. The rest of them use MySQL. eBay, Amazon, Google, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, everyone is using MySQL. And on, the, on this side, we see a lot of people that a lot of partners, our partners that embedded MySQL in their software or in the hardware. As you can see, we have Cisco embedded in the network switch, you know, Autodesk, there's someone from Autodesk here, I, I don't know whether he's here now. Autodesk is using it in uh, AutoCAD. Uh, F5 is load balancer. Symantec is using it in the bright, bright mail product. Uh, uh, Avaya, Avaya also in the IP phone, VoIP phone. Cisco is also using the IP phone as well. If you if you have it in your uh, you know campus or your office, 
Yes, you are, you are already a MySQL user. Okay, and the cloud, we, we see a lot of uh, people actually use MySQL there. Actually, most of the of the people that become a cloud vendor actually uh, uh, provide MySQL as a service. Now we keep on raising the bar under uh, under our, under our umbrella. Now people might be last time people think like five years ago, people think that hey, Oracle already have Oracle DB. Why want to buy? Uh, MySQL and people have a lot of negative connotation uh, thinking at the time but it doesn't it doesn't materialize it didn't happen so the fact is we are still here we are actually developed even further at this point our 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 developer now become twice the number of developer last time since acquisition so it's all good we are pushing for more development <coughs> Now let's take a look at the today main agenda, which is the Python libraries. So this uh, we will will be talking about this Python libraries and command line tools to work with MySQL servers. the The idea is to reduce complex operations to and to become a single command. So you just call this command, and then the this command will actually call call up a lot of uh, other operations behind. Okay, um, extensible. Okay, let's move on. Right, first is server wide operations. Now, in this server operations, we will be talking about uh, uh, MySQL server instance. What can you do with, 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 the, with the instance? Say, if at, that, at some point you have a MySQL instance. And after that, you want what do you want to do? You want to see what is the information regarding this MySQL. Imagine you have one single command to explore everything about this MySQL instance. Just one single command to see what where is it, what is it installed, what is the base directory, and everything in one format, one nice format. On top of that, we have another tool that to clone the entire, to clone the instance. So you have MySQL, one MySQL database, one MySQL instance, and you want to clone this to become one new instance with the same parameters, the same global variables, right? So you have you, all, all the parameters and, the, and everything is the same. All users are all the same only minus the databases you will see later so first is the mysql server clone so this server mysql server clone script is is to actually clone this to clone the entire uh, uh, instance including the user and the global variables them but without the user database, right? The next one is MySQL Server Info. It's uh, about showing you the server configuration and state information. Okay, let's, let's uh, do some data. I hope you have a little bit more time. Just now, actually, I just I just ran this. So um, can you see it here? So this is this is where. Uh, how you actually um, run this script, MySQL Server clone, followed by dash dash server is the uh, is the source server. 
and then and then the new data new data is the data directory of the destination of the clone and then followed by delete delete data is only only to to delete the existing data directory before you create the clone okay and then the new port new port is the the new instance port for the clone uh, root password is the password for the clone root password for the clone and uh, mysql d option that one is log bin dash equal mysql that one is optional you want to if you want to create uh, you want to add more option behind mysql then you can you can put it there if you don't want then you just skip it so what happened is it, it will go through all this stuff bang 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 and then when you see this success then voila you have the uh, script and yeah, you have the uh, instance so as you can see here okay let let us run this again okay it's not okay because it's already up we kill the one Okay, so it's basically how simple it is to run. So it's just you just have to run this. But remember, when you run this, use MySQL OS user. Don't use root because it, you have you will have a privilege problem. All right, so this is uh, so it's, it's already done. Right now is the date is eleven forty four. So we can see here that the instance is already up here, 11.44, right? And we can actually uh, log in, mysql root p mysql p3328 protocol tcp and we are in show global variables. Uh, port 3328 so as you can see you see all the all the main databases information mysql and performance schema this is the the, the minimum database for a mysql instance to run is it too too dim for you? Oh, okay. I don't know how because it's the uh, the screen the projector is already like that. I don't know how to. Let me see. Uh, we make it bigger. minimum number of databases for uh, MySQL but it is not copying the rest of the databases this is this is 3308 is the source MySQL and as you can see it has sys and test databases which is not copied over to the cloud so as you can see here it's not about copying the databases is about copying the configuration. That's it. Okay. Right now for the MySQL server info, you can see that this is all the 
information that you can get from MySQL Server Info script. This is a pretty. This is really straightforward. Okay. Um, moving on. Next is database operations. Now, in database operations, we talk about uh, operation between two databases. We have these five scripts. First is MySQL DB compare. Is to compare database. As you know, in, in MySQL, database equal to schema, right? So, so you want, if you want to compare this, uh, whatever tables, uh, procedures, um, indexes inside the, the inside two database, you can compare with this, you can use this script. It will compare everything, it will give you a report, okay? So if you do a if you do a clone and you copy the ta the database you want to make these two identical and then after that you have to run this script to actually check what is the difference if there is no difference then you are good Now MySQL DB copy is to copy the database You remember just now just now just now when we when we do a clone we only clone the configuration parameters Right, not including the database. We will do this uh, later. In fact, we can do it now. Um, so what I'm going to do here is the I'm going to copy the database test from instance 3308 to instance 3328 the one that I just cloned so I just run these uh, parameters source destination the the source database and the destination database locking lockings just to make sure just to apply to you know to make sure that your uh, you lock the table first before you actually copy the file Okay, as you can see, it is copying one each and every tables into the new instance. By the way, for those of you that is uh, thinking this is the same with MySQL dump, it is not the same. It is it has its own mechanism. Many of you guys know that that we have Python this this kind of script utilities in MySQL. Okay, before that, any one of you here using MySQL? Don't worry, I will not ask more. I will not ask more questions. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Wow, a lot. Cool. So I, I really hope later on uh, you guys will be able to utilize this script as well because this is a very very useful script. Any one of you run replication? MySQL replication? You you run MySQL replication? Good. We have a we have a, a utility script as well for replications. A lot of them actually. It will be useful for you. So um, okay, we are done the copying. So now we let's check what is whether it is already inside. So as you can see, the test two database is inside. Use test two. Then we have all the tables there. It's as simple as that. Okay. Right. So I have more twenty more minutes. <coughs> Okay, um, next is MySQL DB export. Means that when you want to transfer the data from remote servers, maybe uh, you might want to do this 
you so you export the it export is out first and then bring the data to the to the destination server and then import it using MySQL DB import. Now again, this is not MySQL dump. MySQL dump, you can MySQL dump when you use MySQL dump, it will create uh, SQL tags, right? It will create all the insert, create table, blah 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 blah. But this one, you can actually choose the format. You can by default it is using format SQL. If you want to use CS, CSV, you want to use tabular or other format, you can do that as well. There are a lot, there are a number of uh, choices. Um, the last one is MySQL diff. This is actually to compare the object definitions, the metadata. So if you want to compare the metadata between two, two uh, uh, objects, you can do that with MySQL diff. Okay. Right. Um, high availability. Just now I mentioned about the replication utility. Okay. For the sake of those who are who is not familiar with uh, our own replication, a replication feature in MySQL has been around for many many years. It is actually one of the first uh, one of the first features that uh, we, that we put into MySQL. It is native in the server libraries. Okay. And. Um, we normally we use my, uh, replication for a number of things. First, uh, maybe for disaster recovery, we can put uh, one master in the production. The slave we put it somewhere outside the city, maybe. So whatever ha whatever happened to the master, the slave can still running. Uh, we can ac activate the slave to become the new production database, right? Um, by default, we are asynchronous, means that the master, when it receives transactions, it will not wait until the slave updated with the transaction. The master will keep on receiving transactions and we, it will not care about the slave. The slave responsibility is to go to the master and pull the changes to its own database and run it. That is that that is uh, meaning of asynchronous. Now, starting from MySQL 5.5, we have what we call semi-synchronous. Semi-synchronous is where we have where the master will make sure that the changes is pushed through to the slave server. Take note that I said slave server on the file system. It only it only transfer the changes to the log in the file system. It will not wait until this log is applied into the database. No. So the slave responsibility here is lesser. It's only to pick up that log from its own server and replay it in its own database. That's it. So this is semi-synchronous means that we are actually um, making sure that the, probab the probability of lagging of uh, lagging behind master and slave is lesser. But of course we need to make sure that the network latency is also can support uh, what we are doing here. Because, because, the, because the master will wait until the, it transfer the files into slave server and that might take time depending on your network latency. Right? Okay, uh, that is a little bit overview. Now, um, high availability, we have uh, uh, scripts built for uh, replication. It simplifies common uh, tasks like configuration, monitoring, and administration. Uh, okay, let's just move on here. This is easier to explain from here. First is MySQL failover. Okay, MySQL failover is a continuous uh, script that will continuously running. When you run this, it will run continuously and it will check whether, MyS whether the master is up. If it's not up, it will automatically configure 
the slave and bring it up to become the new master. Remember that when I talk about replication just now, master and slave, whatever happened to master, you still need to do manually, you still need to do uh, manual configuration to bring up the slave to become the new production. Right? With this uh, script, it will do it automatically. But on the other hand, it will keep on running. It will keep on checking the master. Okay? This next one is MySQL Replicate is to, uh, to make a configuration to make a configuring or setting up replication easier. It's just to run this one script and that's that's done. You have all the replication running. Now MySQL RPL admin is a replication administ administration script to do a manual switch over or manual failover. Manual. The keyword is here is manual. Is uh, if say say something like this: You have master and slave, and then the master somehow you want to say you want to do a maintenance on the hardware or maintenance on the OS. You need to bring down to bring it down, right? So you can do master RPL, RPL admin and switch over to the slave. So the slave become the new production, the new master, and this one you can bring it down safely. Okay, uh, MySQL RPL check is the checking replication configuration between the two, between the master and slave. Uh, Report show is the, to display the map of replication topology, means that if you have a big replication uh, architecture, you have one master and then behind you have five slaves, and then behind these five slaves you have 20 slaves, Behind this 20 slave, you have 200 slave, say. So this, this structure makes you very busy. It's not that easy to actually uh, you know, see, especially if you are new and you come into this environment and suddenly, hey, you have a lot of this. Uh, you have to figure out yourself, basically. With this, you can actually check the entire thing. It will show you the entire architecture of your application. Okay, um, my, my SQL repo sync, synchronize master and slave. This is to synchronize the master and slave. Uh, Forcely, round robin multi source slave. Now, this is the interesting part. My SQL repo MS. <coughs> As you know, at this point, have any one of you heard about multi source replication in my SQL? Anyone? No? Yes? No. Okay, at this point 5.6, we don't support multi-source replication, multi, oh sorry, multi-source yet. Yet means that if you have two master or more than, at least more than one master and you have one slave. That is, at this point, it's not possible. Yeah, but it is, it will be possible with 5.7. It is coming probably around October this year, but for now it is not. However, there is a way to circumvent that kind of situation. Means that if you have two master and you have one, you have one uh, slave. The problem is that if you have if both of them running at the same time, they will be clashing because it, uh, they can get duplicate rows. That's a problem. But if they run one by one at a time, they might not get duplicate rows, depending on how you actually create, uh, you know, restructure the schema. So in this MySQL REPL MS, it will actually make sure that every master will have its own time running, uh, re replicating to the slave. Say if you have two, it will, it will it will make sure that okay the first master you replicate first say for the first five minutes and then change to the second master five minutes then change back to the first master five minutes so it keep on changing 
So in this case, it is now possible to make it multi-source. But there is a, there is a catch. It is not, uh, uh, it is not live. Yeah, I mean, not all master are live at that time. Okay. Um, okay. What time now? <laughs> all right. Um, general operations. Let's go to here. MySQL FRM is to actually to to grab the FRM. You know that every tables in MySQL always have FRM they files, right? FRM file is the table structure information of of the table, right? So, in this case, if you want to grab this FRM file from, say, from a corrupted database, yeah, the database is gone, but you still have the FRM. How you want to take out and make it an uh, uh, SQL statement, create table, blah blah blah. This is how it will actually create. A, it will actually spawn a new instance, and pull out the table. Okay, I have a very very small time, but um, let me just try to run this. So. So here, as you can see here, I am trying to get the the from the base tier. I'm trying to get the FRM from this this uh, path and this table that has FRM. And this part is actually the instance that I want to spawn to be able to read this FRM file. So when you run this, it will spawn. It will spawn a server. Here, it will spawn a new instance to be able to get this FRM. This is the result, which is the create table, right? Okay. Okay, um, the next is MySQL. This usage is actually to check how, how much the utilization, this utilization for particular database. Have you ever asking that before? How much this database actually occupy the disk? So this actually, uh, this, this script actually make it easy for you. It will calculate for you and give you the result for uh, any database that you want. <coughs> MySQL index check to check for redundant indexes. Uh, MetaGrep is to, to search for metadata. PropGrep for process information. Metadata is to check for metadata on the table and indexes. Uh, user clone is to clone a user. You want to clone this user and to create this user to in another server with the same privilege if it has a lot of privilege say if you if you if you run a grant on object privileges it will be it will have a lot of privilege and you don't want to have to run that one at a time that is slow and it's ineffective so with this it will actually clone and create the user for you MySQL UC is just the user console for the, all the entire uh, my as, uh, utilize utility script. Okay, this one is just uh, the last one. I believe I'm standing be between you and your lunch, so I don't want to disturb do more. So uh, right, this is just a. MySQL Enterprise Audit because because the I know that this is a community event but the problem is there is a, a Python script that is uh, related to this so I just uh, want to show you this Enterprise Audit is actually um, uh, 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 ex 
extension that is available for from enterprise side. That in enterprise our enterprise edition MySQL. And this what what it does is that it logs every connections, every login, every activities on your MySQL instance. In down to the SQL statement. So you will be able to track back what whoever changed the data when it is changed when it is changed and whatever happened to the what what changes uh, what the what is the value or everything you can track back okay filtering log rotation and everything it's all on the XML format it will be written to a OS operating system log file system in the form of audit log in XML format okay this is the uh, the utility script that we use for that we have MySQL audit grab to actually search for audit these audit logs to find certain uh, one certain uh, word certain comments right and then the next one is MySQL audit admin is the for administration of audit logs that you currently already set okay all right, um, I guess I'm almost um, quite on time. Uh, this is just all this uh, that I uh, just talked just now. Synchronization checker, REPL sync is to check data consistency between uh, uh, master and slave. Okay, it's pretty simple. I just don't want to cover this too much. This is the multi-source replication that I talk about, they are, they'll be doing it in a round robin scheme so it will take turn whichever master so at any point in time only one master will update the slave any point in time okay. so it's pretty, it's pretty easy to set only, slave, only one slave right and then you have a number of master and then it will take round robin MySQL DB compare is to compare databases. Meta grab is to um, to grab uh, metadata for tables or procedures or indexes, matching certain pattern. Okay. Prop grab is the same thing; is just for process. So it, it can it can do more just yeah. after that you know after you find out the after you find the process you can actually add what do you want to do with it if you want to kill that you can kill the query or the connections okay MySQL FRM we talked about this earlier just now and I demo it MySQL UC is the user console for the utility script. Alright, so to learn more, go into the utility script uh, website in mysql.com. Right guys, any more quest any questions before I think the, the organizer here is already very <laughs> yeah, we have time for one question if there's any. If not you can always yeah, okay. yes. Okay, normally as uh, in, in the world of big data and with Hadoop especially, uh, we have um, MySQL will be serving as the front and end. Means that the front, it will, it will receive all the data and it will inject the data into Hadoop. And then at the end, it will take the data from Hadoop and put it into a RDBMS so it's easier to query. Yeah. And uh, at this point, we have a tool that will do a uh, uh, um, injection, data injection in real time, but it is still in alpha. We call it MySQL Applier for Hadoop. That uh, I believe there is another, there is another uh, in batch job in Hadoop. You have uh, Apache Scoop, right? Is it Apache Scoop? That also, but this is working as a batch, so it will take batch and boom, boom. But 
for our tool, it will do it in real time. Whenever you get transaction from to MySQL, then it will grab it and immediately push into Hadoop. Yeah. No problem. Okay, so if you have any more questions, you can go uh, look for Ricky during lunch or like afternoon tea and all the time. Right? Yeah. You'll be at your booth? Yeah, uh, I'll be at my booth. Uh, do drop by. We have a, lot, a number of freebies. And if you like, you can get, uh, if, you, if you're lucky, you can get a dolphin dog, which is very, very rare. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.